Miracles fall like hidden rain. Miracles bring the Christ in spring. Kind of the folklore and the legend. There was a there was a man who traveled all around the United States uh, flinging seeds. That's basically was his purpose in life to just fling seeds. Johnny Appleseed. He's actually a Swedenborgian minister who just went out, and that was his calling. And in some sense, that really that song reminds me of of him in the sense that um, we are really called to be like a flinger of seeds. Uh, you know, we just have a pouch full of seeds, of these love seeds, and we're supposed to fling them. And some of you remember the parables from the Bible. Jesus even used a parable in the Bible about flinging the seeds, and some landed on the rocks, and some landed among the thistles, and some landed on fertile soil, and much fruit sprung up. And uh, I think the thing about Johnny Appleseed is he really wasn't ever looking back. He didn't really look back to see where his apple trees took root or not. He was he had a function of flinging the seeds. And I feel like that's about the joy that we have in our hearts. We have so much joy. That's like our apple sack with all the seeds in it. And we get better and better at just flinging them. Flinging them everywhere. Flinging them behind our head, behind our back, left, right. Uh, and then the more we fling them, the more we seem to have a wellspring of unlimited seeds. Uh, Jesus talks about it in, in the miracle. He says you have a really an unlimited supply, uh, and you can open up the storehouse of your mind, he says in the Course, and give them away. He's talking about miracles. And if giving and receiving are the same, then you actually come into that experience through the giving and the extending of the miracles. The miracles bless the giver and the receiver. There's no other gift in this world. There is no gift in time and space that operates on the same principles as the miracle. When you give a gift in this world, whoever you gave it to has the gift, and you do not have the gift anymore. <laughs> You've just depleted your supply. Even if it's seeds like apple seeds, you know, you have less of them as you empty your pouch. But not with the miracle. The miracle, you know, if you open up and you go into the storehouse of your mind to give the miracle away, there is an increase, we'll say, to the giver and to the receiver. There is always an increase in the giving and the extending of the miracle. That's how we come into the experience that giving and receiving are the same. It's through the extending the miracles. They seem to transcend all the laws of this world. There are no laws of this world that, that confine the miracle. It's like the law of love is the only law of love that there is. And we seem to believe in laws like traffic laws and laws of, in countries and laws of physics like gravity and so on and so forth. And really they're just a lot of pseudo laws that have been made up by the ego. None of them are true. Only the law of love is true. It's quite amazing when you think that you could spend your whole lifetime following a bunch of laws that don't really have any reality. <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh my gosh, I've been conforming <laughs> all along. <laughs> to illusory laws, <laughs> and while we teach the same as Jesus, you know, it's like, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar, and unto God's that which is God's. The whole point of that saying was that if you do that, and you keep rendering unto God, and you keep opening to serve God, then you will see that actually you are under no laws but God's. You'll have a transformation in your mind, and you will realize that you've only been under one law, one rule, and that is the law of love. I am as God created me. Is uh, That's pretty simple. <laughs> it's pretty joyful, too, to think of yourself as under no laws but God's. Our theme is, God's will for me is perfect happiness. And the only way we can know God's will for who we are is to know our will. Because unlike a lot of the teachings that we grew up with, 
you know, even those things of, Lord, thy will, not mine, be done. Pretty common. You've got to let that one go, too. Because <laughs> thy will is my will. You have to have enough humbleness to accept that, that you share God's will. If God's will for you was given in creation, and you share that will, and everything else, every sense of what we would call personal will, is in a sense trying to say no to God's will, the will that was given us for perfect happiness. And the only way that you know that you're flowing in God's will is coming into a state of perfect happiness. That's our destiny. In fact, you cannot help but know God's will. And that everything is getting funneled <laughs> into just, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I remember now. I remember our communion. I remember our joy, our happiness. That's what it was all about. And it was never, ever about anything else. You can give yourself permission to just start to let go of everything else. And as we talked about yesterday, if someone comes to you and say, just don't, you know, don't get too happy. <laughs> you can just smile and go, I actually am going to <laughs> not put any parameters on my happiness. I am entitled to miracles. I am entitled to know my will as God's will for perfect happiness. Miracles fall like healing rain